Hey, what's up guys? Rudolanel here, coming back at you with some more Python tutorials, still looking at curses. Now, in the last video, we finally put together rooms, and that was pretty cool. Let's actually take a look at what we have here. If I run the program, we've got our player here, and we've got like this, maybe, mass of water, or anything, really. It's up to our imagination, and that's what's kind of cool about this. But, if... If our player supposedly is submerged in water, let's say, or he, he's walking on grass even, or he's, he's in like this yellow carpet, I don't care, the area surrounding him, or his background in our case, because the character is only one character, it's a one by one like space in the grid, right now it's black. But we know, because we kind of programmed this, that it should be blue, because he's, you know, walking on water right now, or he's in water. It, it, it doesn't matter. The case is, he should have the background corresponding to whatever he is that he's walking on. Now, that can be freaking anything. We can set up any color we want it to be, and it needs to be able to actually, you know, reflect that. It needs to turn into what it should be. So, if you, I don't know, made like a whole entire array the size of your freaking terminal screen and actually kept track of each individual character, um, each individual attribute, each individual foreground and background color for every single character and pixel on the screen, but that's kind of a waste, you know? Like, why would we ever want to do that when we know that we have some capability with end curses to do this at any moment other than that? And that's exactly what I want to get into in this tutorial, because when we're using a room, we've got this room object set up, we have the class, that's all done by a single function that we learned about very, very early on. We've got background. And background applies a certain character and a certain color through the entire freaking window. And that's cool. So we need to know okay, what really is the color pair that's being used here? Now, thankfully, we've actually set everything up in specific objects, and those objects are what keep track of the background and the foreground. They're, they're modified, or at least accessed, by the self, or the actual object. Now, this is where we can take, like, a little bit of control of everything that's happening inside the game. Let's say, let's say we had an entity, or a list, an array even, of all the objects on the screen. Now, those can be the room, that can be the player, it can be anything that we want it to be, and that's exactly how we're going to set this up. We need to set up um, a collection of everything on the screen, and we're going to be able to look through those, sorry, look through those, and because they're all global in the scope that we're going to build a function that allows us to do this, we can look at individual objects, attributes, without being in a different object to begin with. Because, let's say, the player, obviously, the player can't look at a room dot background. It, ju it just can't, because it doesn't know that the room exists. Because the room is a completely different object. But in the global scope, we can actually do this. So that's what we're going to do. So we kind of have to rework things just a little bit. If we go back, way, way back into our, um, our main... Let's see, where is our, our main script here? Uh, i got to find it with, on the mass of all the programs that I have open. When we go into our main function, what we're going to do is we're going to use a global variable that I'm going to create very soon. So I'm just going to call this instances, and that's going to be the list of everything on the screen. So our function needs to be able to use this, so we're going to use global instances so we know that we're accessing a global variable. Boom! Awesome, that's all we need to do for the main object. Now, we actually need to go ahead and create this in the functions area. So, let's open up functions right up here. I'll drag this right over. And here's where we actually get down to the nitty nitty gritty stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create two different arrays here. One of them is going to be, I think, colors. Did I set all that up? Yes, I did. Okay, so instances is going to equal a blank or array and we're going to fill that when we create objects in the game and colors that we're going to use to keep track of the other color, color colors sorry that we create all throughout the program now we know about our make color function we know about the global color number and all but we want to actually add to our colors array so 
this is where we're going to set it up because we want to make sure that if whenever we create a color, we don't ever want to see that color again. We don't want to try and recreate a color that we've already created. So this is how we set this up. If the foreground and the background that are passed into the function are in the colors array, then we're going to go ahead and return those inside the colors array. So, because the colors, the, that array is actually going to be filled with tuples or smaller arrays that contain the foreground and background colors. So, we, in this case, we will already have known what they are, so I'm just going to say colors index of those colors right there, the foreground and the background. And we're going to have to add one to those because there is an offset. Okay. Now, if they don't exist, that's when we're going to want to create the color. Set up the else little clause here. And once we add, after we add the global color number, we're going to go ahead and add this into colors. So an array form of the tuple, foreground, and background. Okay, awesome. Now, now that that's all set up, we need to be able to work with our instances. So if we actually go back into our, our display here, whenever the player walks into that room, or another instance, any instance, obviously, that's what we're going to set up with our instances array, we need to know, obviously, the coordinates for that whole thing here, the, from the x to the y to the with the height, the, all this, or this garble. I know that I did that wrong. Shut up. It's fine. <laughs> we need to know that information, and we need to know the color, and the player has to obviously change to that color every single time that it happens. So, let's do this. Let's create the function that allows us to do this. We know that it has to be in the global scope, so we know we have to be in our functions.python file. So, I'm going to look over at my notes here, and I think we're good to go. What we're going to do is we're going to define a new function, and that's going to test whether or not we're actually, or one object, is actually meeting with any other objects inside the game. So, place meeting the object, we're going to test whether the object is touching anything else. This is typically going to be relatively used for only the player, but this is still a very, very special case. So, we're going to be working with this a whole lot. Global instances, because we're going to want to use that. Now we're going to look through all of the instances. So I'm going to set up a variable that will determine whether or not we found something that we're colliding with. That's going to be false by default, because we're going to have to loop through all of these. So for each instance in the instances array, what we're going to do here is test if the instance is the object that we're already looking at, then, dude, we don't even have to bother. Just just skip this. Don't, don't bother in the loop. If not, what we need to do here is actually get that coordinate information. So we're going to test if the object that we're looking at, typically in the case is going to be the player, if they if their x position is going to be less than and equal to the instance that we're looking at's x position, and the object dot y is going to be greater than or equal to instance dot y, we're going to keep looking, even if we're including the um, the width and height here, the object dot x is less than instance.w and the object dot y is less than instance dot h. Now if this happens, then okay, we have a possible instance that we're looking at. So possible instance, this is going to be a new variable that I'm creating, is our instance. And found can equal true. Good. Now, when we break out of that for loop, when we're, when we're all done searching, what we're going to do is we're going to test if we found something. And if we did, then we're going to go ahead and return. Yes, there was a collision. So, true. And inside these parentheses, because we're actually going to return two values, the next value that we're going to return is the background of that possible instance. Now, we can access that because we can access all the variables from the instance because we're in the global scope. I can't stress that enough. So, possible instance, 
dot background. You see that? That's pretty cool. Now, if we didn't find anything, then we'll just go ahead and return false. Okay. I think our place meeting object is com our place meeting function is complete. Next, we're going to move into something else. Obviously, we need to incorporate this into our player. So let's open up our player function here. I'll drag this over, make it so you guys can see it. Now, we need to create a new function. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set it up. We're going to determine if we ever need to change the background, we're going to do that. We're going to correct the background. That's going to be the name of our function here. We need the self keyword, of course, because this is an object. And what we're going to be changing it to, the variable changing, I'm going to set this up, is going to be what we returned from testing that place meeting function with ourself, the player object. Now, if we know that we're changing, then you guess what we have to do? Set the color of ourselves to equal self.foreground, because we already know that that's the foreground that we want to use. And in this case, changing one, because that is the index of, we just saw it over here, the background that we need to know. Okay. Boom. Look at all that. Hopefully we're done. If everything goes according to plan here, we'll change background correspondingly to whatever area we're walking in. Let's look over to the main here. I'm going to go to that, jump right out of the program, go back into my main uh, script. Here it is. And by default, I'm going to tell the player to correct his background because we never know where he's going to be. Correct background. Okay, great. I hope this works, guys. Come on, work with me. Main.python? Ooh, we don't get anywhere. Can you guys figure out why this is happening? Can you guess? I'm sure a lot of you already know. So take a look. We set up the instances array, and that's what we're using to actually keep track of everything. So, we need to actually add things to our instances array when we have our main function. I'll get this set up over here, main, once I find it, the list of everything that I have open. Okay, great. We've got our instances. Now, we're going to actually add the rum into the instances array. Instances plus equals the player, and we'll add in the rum. Now let's see what happens. Ooh, we get an error. Room instance has no attribute X. All right, let's take a look. We're going to head on over to our room file, which I don't think I have open right now, so let's go ahead and open that up. Room, okay. Now, I see what's happening here, do you? We're creating the self window with the arguments that we've passed in to the function, to the object, but we're not actually keeping track of those arguments. So we need to know where they all are. Okay, let's set this up. Self.x is going to equal x. Self.y, you guessed it, is going to equal y. And self.w, that's going to equal x plus w, because we need to know the width relative to that spot. And y is going to equal, h is going to equal y plus h. Does that look okay, guys? Let's take a look at this now. I'll reset. I'll run main, and boom! We've got a blue background! Look at this, he's running around, he's moving, and it's staying blue. <laughs> now if I move out... Okay, whoa, it's, it's black now. You guys understand what's happening here? The standard screen is not an object. The standard screen, which is black by default in our case, is black, but it's not an object, so we can actually test what the background is. So what I'm gonna do, to make this easier on us, if I go into uh, the main function, our, our main script up here, I'll go ahead and create the um, world, and that can equal a room that is the whole freaking thing. Let's say. Um, zero, zero, 
and um, standard screen width, standard screen height, that can equal standard screen dot get max yx. And you guys know what that function is. And actually, it should be reversed. I should be using hw because of the way the end curses returns things. Standard screen w, standard screen x. Sorry, h. <laughs> now black, and that can be a space, and that doesn't need to be bold. Now we've got our world. World and object room. Let's see what happens here. If I run this, here's our character. He's woven out. Oh, we still got a problem here. What's going on? Let's take a look. Okay, I think I got it. I realize now that I forgot something very, very crucial. I've actually only got it set up so that the player will correct the background the moment they're created. Now, this is only happening right now because we're lucky. When we actually run the program, our player will automatically start right in the blue box. So that's why it's been working for us before. But we need to actually make sure that every time it moves, or every time our player is in a different spot, that dude, check for the background then too. So what we're going to do is self inside the if moved thing, inside of the move function, we have to test, or at least we have to actually try and correct the background every time we move to a different spot. So, again, this is a little intense. Uh, I've actually set it up so that the world is at the back right now, so we have to change that as well. Remember, we have to keep track of the order as to where our things are happening in the game. The world is below everything. So the world can be, let's say, at the beginning, at the at the at the front of the instances array. The object room has to be farther down or farther away from it because it's above the world. It's it's the top layer in relative to that. So I mean, the world can be uh, after the player. Even it can be anywhere as long as it's before the object room and anything else that we want to add into it. Let's try and run this now. Now it's blue. We got a blue background just like we needed to when we move out. It's black. It's working perfect. Okay, so let's experiment with this just a little more, because I'm not happy right now. <laughs> let's try it again with another room in there. Object room 2. Let's say it starts um, 10 down, let's say 5, um, maybe maybe 8, maybe 8 in, and it can have, um, let's say, 50 and uh, 10. And this can be color yellow and color red. Actually, color magenta. How about that? Ew! Ew, ew, ew! Okay, now we've got an issue here, but you guys know exactly why it's happening. I know I forgot to add it in to our instances array. Object room, object room 2. If I run this, Look at that, our purple player walking over it, he walks over there, it's blue, walked over there, it's black. It'll apply to any scenario. This works perfectly fine for us, this is great. But, it's it's messy. And it's tedious, and it, it, has, to te it has to check every time the player moves. What if we could entirely disregard this? Well, there is one way to do it, but... It's a sacrifice, depending on how you, as the programmer, want to design it. I'm going to let that thought linger in your mind, and then I'm going to introduce to you how we can remove all of this. It's very, very simple. It's very, very easy. How we can remove all of this by a single change. But for now, take a look at what you've just written. You've set it up so the player can, no matter what it is that it's walking on, will change its background correspondingly. That's pretty awesome, guys. It's taken us some time, we had to work through a bunch of errors and bugs that we didn't expect, and I certainly made a bunch of mistakes, but this is pretty cool. <laughs> it creates a whole new world for us. Alright, I'm going to shut up, I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to end this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you in another video. Bye.